We're on easy street And it feels so sweet Cause the world is but a treat When you're on easy street Welcome to the Easy Street Radio Show Hosted by Rob Scribner Grab a cup of coffee and let's get started Hey, thanks for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. This will help us grow. Also note, buying some of our merchandise or donating to our channel is very helpful also. Thank you for supporting our show. Hi guys, welcome to Easy Street. This is episode 26. Welcome to the show. Nice to have you. Everything cool? <laughs> So uh, today is Tuesday and uh, kind of watching the stocks and I was just so impressed to see that now they lowered interest rates. We're only minus 200 right now. So uh, that was helpful. <laughs> anyway, I heard a joke that was kind of interesting. It's like, well, at least the feds are out there to lower interest rates so we can make mortgages from our quarantined homes. Yeah. So anyways. Today's show, <clears throat> my subject is, is, is this the turning point? What do I mean by that? And uh, before I go into that, I guess I should also let you know that you can find Easy Street on Good Talk Radio. Uh, you see the link below. Uh, hashtag is Ranger Rob. And uh, you can find this on Spreaker and Spotify and iHeartRadio and all kinds of stuff. And... Uh, we also love to hear comments from you. I've had some wonderful comments and I appreciate that. So uh, anyway, getting back to the stock thing. And first of all, it's one big phony thing I've ever seen because uh, supply and demand is affected and it's really demand. And uh, uh, if the problems will happen as well, there's a lot of companies doing really good right now. If you're a prepping company, you're making really good money. <laughs> And Costco's doing really good, but it's it's short lived. And so uh, I don't think. A, have you ever noticed the media doesn't seem to be focusing on the real problem of supply, and and uh, I don't think people are either. And uh, where you work may really be affected big time by supply and demand, and. Uh, are you aware of it? Are you paying attention? Does your company rely on parts from different countries? And I'm not just talking about, you know, the big place there over there. Um, all these other countries um, all do uh, outsourcing. Oh, we do a lot of outsourcing to Mexico and Italy and all kinds of other countries. And uh, if we're not getting our parts, you can't build your your product and we can't build your product the companies are going to go wait a minute we need to put the brakes on here uh, this is costing us money and I can't pay for uh, labor if uh, if we're not making any money <laughs> so what's that gonna play out to be what's well, probably gonna be layoffs and then I was talking to my wife the other day uh, she's in accounting and it's like uh, it appears that if you're on furlough and if you're laid off, apparently you can apply for unemployment. So that will be healthy for the government. So uh, the bad thing is you live in a state like ours, unemployment isn't very effective. It's something, though. Uh, Got to pay the bills. So with all this in mind, with the good old stocks doing what they're doing, I think there's only one way to handle this. I think I need a little bit of Nickelback. Okay, I feel a little bit better now. So, uh, uh, nothing beats a little bit of Nickelback. So anyway, uh, turmoil. Uh, it's in this turning point. So, <laughs> it's so hard to tell right now whether we take this really serious or is it just another issue you know and we're talking about the cv stuff and uh i have to abbreviate it sorry guys um and so the reports 
I get out there, I actually went and looked myself, checked out Costco, and and yes, indeed, paper products are definitely sold out. Uh, cleaning products are sold out. Uh, hand sanitizers are sold out. And uh, and we're in Arizona, and now Washington State, they're actually in much more panic because now they're up to six folks that have passed away and uh, schools closing for, um, some of them are doing it for cleaning and training purposes. And that's a good thing. Actually, I kind of think that's smart. Um, but do you take this serious? Do you change your life a little bit? Do you not, I mean, I found myself not going to certain meetings now, or um, I kind of think about, the places we're going, how crowded they are. I mean, am I overreacting? Are we overreacting? Um, <clears throat> the CV stuff sounds like it's kind of like a common fluish kind of thing. And uh, it's kind of hard to decide whether you should react to it or not. And uh, I mean, it sounds like most people can get over it quite easily. And uh, that that's a good thing, I guess. But um, at the same time, it sounds like folks my age should be a little bit concerned. I need some more Nickelback. Oh, okay, I feel much better now. <laughs> Dang. Sometimes you just need a shot of Nickelback and uh, it'll bring you out of your out of your slump and uh, So anyway, so getting back to my conversation about the CV stuff So of course I'm inundating myself with the information and so I don't know if I'm just getting all screwed up in the head or not, but uh, Why is it I mean uh, people say this isn't as bad as what we have with influ influenza, <laughs> um, yet they have all this panic going on and businesses being affected and countries being shut down and quarantines. Um, so I don't know what to think and I'm sure you guys don't know what to think. But if they do this quarantine thing, that is terrible and it turns out the reason they choose 14 days instead of what they're actually thinking it could be up to 27 days is the CBC has a uh, law restriction um, that says that they have the right to quarantine people um, uh, up to 14 days and so that's one of the reasons why they've been sticking with the 14 day thing even though it sounds like we need more days so uh, I think I need some more Nickelback. <laughs> ah, much better. I do. I feel much better. <laughs> so, guys, I got to ask you a question. I got to get un un serious here for a minute. Have you guys seen this new uh, talking pet app? Oh, my gosh. Well, you know, when you own uh, Ranger Rob Poopy Bags, I couldn't resist. So... Here's one of my versions of Talking Pets. Ranger Rob cares. Cares about your family. Cares about your pet. Cares about the environment. Buy Ranger Rob Poopy Bags at Amazon with free shipping. Hey guys, we're back. And guess what? Just as I was playing that, my phone made a big bleep. And it says breaking news. Guess what? We have a new case of CV stuff in uh, Arizona. So apparently it's a 20 year old that was in an area that has a lot of CV stuff and uh, brought it home. And so, uh, yeah, appreciate that. And uh, uh, he's on, I'm sure he didn't mean to. Uh, so he's at home quarantine uh, and uh, brings up our cases here in Arizona to a couple. And uh, yeah, so we're the, the race is on. We're trying to catch up with Washington, I guess. but. Yeah, that's not good news, but, uh, uh, you know, they're doing more testing, so that's good. So I'm sure we're going to hear more cases all over the United States. 
But uh, yeah, but I uh, just thought I'd let you know, we just found out we have another one here in Arizona. Well, with that in mind, I thought I'd take another look at the stocks. And uh, I'm sure that if you guys heard this, uh, hear this show at a different time, it probably doesn't mean much to you, but it's Tuesday. Now on Monday, oh yeah, it's, um, the, uh, we had a big crash the week before, about three or 4,000 points. And then on Monday, by magic, it came up another 1,200. And then Tuesday, uh, this morning, they decided to uh, uh, lower interest rates. That ought to help everything. And like I said, just think of that. We can get lower mortgage rates and buy cars really cheap while we're in quarantine. And so they are saying, by the way, that they really don't think lowering interest rates really is going to help the problem. So, yes, so you could get money cheaper uh, for businesses. And, of course, that's all they seem to be trying to help is business. And uh, so uh, the problem is, is if they can't get uh, inventory, what's the money going to help? And so it's really a stimulus that probably won't be very helpful. But you can see our stocks are now at minus 500 and uh, and slowly dripping. Uh, it could recover. It's all over the place. They are injecting money. Uh, they, yesterday, I think they put 55 billion. Yeah, I said with a B, billion dollars. Uh, in the repo market and uh, uh, they did everything they could do to get the numbers to go back up and then this morning they decided to lower interest rates and uh, I don't think it's being effective and uh, so it could be quite interesting of course everybody's 401ks and investments are probably taking a hit which hey we've been through this before and if you're in it for the long term it's pretty good if you're a little bit older you might be a little more concerned but yeah um, uh, some of the old tricks just may not work here. And so uh, we could be in for a hard lump, bump, whatever. And my concern is, is should we be worried? Should we prepare? Is it overreacting? Do we, one, is be careful of the quarantine stuff. Two, is our businesses that we're all working at going to be affected? Uh, is a lot of services going to be affected, which are jobs that, you know, the United States is famous for service companies. And so if people are in a worry or in a panic, they're going to stop doing a few things like going to movies and uh, uh, going to concerts and going to sporting events. And uh, is that overreacting? That's my question. I mean, I have these concerns and it's like I'm a prepper and I'm all prepped up. Uh, we're in good shape. We could be quarantined for two months here. And we'd be in great shape. And the other thing I'm always worried about is why is everybody saying getting food and water? I I don't foresee if we got locked down that you wouldn't have water. Uh, the only reason I would think it'd be a problem is um, maybe if you're traveling or something like that or in your RV or something. Uh, you may want to stock up with water because you couldn't get it. I don't know if you can. I don't think water is going to be an issue. I could be wrong. Please, in the comments below, tell me why we should stock up on water. Food, yeah. Uh, meals, yeah. Should, we'll probably have electricity, so stuff for the freezer, too. Buy, buy, you, know, you can buy a lot of canned goods, but I'd buy uh, a lot of frozen goods. It's cheaper. And uh, lots of frozen veggies, a lot of frozen uh, tater tots and, and things like that. And you should be in pretty good shape. So, uh, yeah, should we be concerned? Are we overreacting? I love to hear your comments. Are we uh, fear mongering? Uh, I don't know. I just it kind of like I want to have this discussion and I want to be able to talk about it without sounding like an insane person. But uh all I can say is I think I need a little more Nickelback. Okay, I feel much better until I looked at this again and now we're at minus 600. And I'm just sitting here through the day doing my modules here and, and just uh, throwing this up there just to kind of stay motivated, not concerned. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> Everything's good. Yes, it's fine, really. The CV stuff, don't worry. Stock market, you're good. <laughs> it's all good. 
Oh, Lord. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, it looks like we're at 620 minus. Yes, we're down 2.31%. And, uh, you know, this stuff could bounce back tomorrow. They could just, you know, do net. How do you have, by the way, how do you have negative interest rates? <laughs> like, they're talking about, we could get into negative interest rates. So... When we make loans, do they pay us too? <laughs> Instead of making payments, you'd actually get money back. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? Oh yeah, I'd like to borrow ten thousand dollars, please. And can you give me a negative interest rate of minus two <laughs> percent? I want you to pay me for making a loan. <laughs> How does that work? Really? <laughs> oh Lord. Meet the greatest dog owner of the world. When my dog poops a sock, I always reach for Ranger Rob poopy bags. Make it easy to pick up your dog waste. Go to Amazon right now and get free shipping. We're on easy street. Okay, guys, we are back. And uh, yeah, stock markets are 676.9. Now a little minus more. Can we hit 700? <laughs> Come on, you can do it. So, uh, a few shows ago, I mentioned to you that we have other shows. One of them is called The Turds. <laughs> yes, The Turds, T-E-R-D-S. And it's actually theturds.com if you ever want to check them out. And they also have a YouTube channel. And I thought I'd show you a little bit of uh, some of the news that they do. And, uh, you know, maybe get a little chuckle. This is a little piece of one of the shows normally they do music videos but uh it's, i can't play too much music on this show so anyway let you uh have a chance to meet the turds in other news it's been reported that the united states has a surplus in oil and gas to find out more about this we go to grandpa in the field grandpa what have you heard about the surplus of gasoline this year? Yes, I have talked to several members of Congress and they say there is a, oh, excuse me, there is seems to be a very large quantity of oil and gas in, excuse me, in the United States. So do you think this will continue? Yes, it seems like this is going to continue. Dear Lord. Are you kidding me? Excuse me? All right, guys, we're back, and I hope we get a chance to go visit the turds. They're kind of fun. If you just want something a little different, a little bit of a laugh, and a little bit of happiness, the turds are for you. So uh, I want to get to over to the subject of uh, gold and silver. And uh, the, when it comes to prepping, a lot of folks say, well, gold and silver, that's what you should have. That's the, um, right. And, and if you really get into the fact of, uh, you know, things really getting tough and, uh, will gold and so, I mean, can you go to the grocery store with silver and say, I want to buy some bread? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if they could exchange it and it sounds good. And yes, it is tangible and it does hold its value. I, I understand that. And of course, if you had a lot of money in like 401ks and then you see the stock market doing what it's doing um, and you wanted to move your money so it quit going down, it just wanted to hold it. Let's say you got $10,000 in investments and you shifted it over to paper, gold and silver, it would be kind of protected at that number. Uh, and it could trickle higher, but it's not going to be as volatile as regular mutual funds and 401ks. But I'm really talking about when things get kind of tough. Uh, if I, uh, if the stores are bare, I mean, obviously we're not really going to go to the store much. It's going to be kind of more of old community stuff. And if somebody came up to me and says, you know, I, I think I better have, I, 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 I like the tr I need some food and I'm all stocked up. And of course I'm going to say, well, do you have anything to trade? If he gave me gold or silver, I'm not real sure. I'm not interested in it. Let's say, uh, I could use, uh, some ammunition for one of my 22s. 
uh, I think I would be more interested in trading him some frozen peas and or or something or uh, of course if she hit the fan that bad it wouldn't be frozen but I grow my own tomatoes and stuff uh, uh, I would certainly be more interested in him trading me a box of bullets uh, I think bartering and gold and silver are not going to be a very good mix if things got tough because people are really going to be into tangible things uh, do you have some gas for my, you know, trading gas for my generator for, oh, a bunch of uh, oranges off of your tree? We have orange trees down here. Uh, that would be more the kind of things that I think a barding would be all about. Love to hear your feelings about this. Do you really think buying a bunch of silver or buying a bunch of gold is really going to help in, a, in the hard times? Uh, do you agree with me that it is a good investment for solid, keeping your money solid and, and protected? I agree with that. Um, even during recessions, there's actually, uh, I, I did a lot of research on this, and during uh, depressions and recessions, gold and silver really didn't do much, which is actually good if you want to hold steady. Um, but as far as like becoming a really high number or well, there actually, uh, there's no proof of that. So uh, I, I'd really be interested in thinking, you know, I'm thinking maybe if, uh, and if you bought silver, let's say you bought physical silver and you buy like, buy it a pound, I think you'd be better off at buying it by, oh, maybe less than an ounce, half ounces. Stuff like that. So if he did get somebody to say, oh, yeah, I'd love to trade you some silver for uh, uh, some of my oranges in the backyard or lemons or whatever you uh, got. Or maybe uh, uh, trading a farmer for some chickens or something. Um, I, I wouldn't want to give him a whole bar, a, a one ounce bar, uh, maybe actually too much. Uh, as far as, of course, we won't really know what the value is. It, <laughs> shit, it's a fan anyway. But anyway. I'd love to hear your comments about gold and silver. Is it a good investment? Would you buy it for bartering? Um, or would you, uh, uh, do you think it's good to kind of also set aside cash? I mean, would people probably feel the same, uh, the same way about silver and gold as they would about cash. Um, if somebody still wants that kind of stuff, they'll probably be willing to trade. But if they're more into physical things like feeding their family or protecting their family, I think that's going to become the priority. What do you think? For the very best in talk radio and classic rock, say, Alexa, go to TuneIn and play good talk radio. Give it a try. Alexa, go to TuneIn and play good talk radio. You'll be happy you did. Well, you guys would be happy to hear that the stocks are at minus 761. It's kind of all over the place. But if you kind of look out in the background there where the graph is, not a good trend. So it's it's bouncing a little bit. But at, at the particular time I'm doing this, it's only noon. And it looks like we have two more hours. Oh, it's noon in uh, Arizona. So it looks like we have just a little more in two more hours to see where this all ends up. And uh, uh, who knows? And, and, you know, this stuff is so phony sometimes it's hard to believe, you know, believe what you're seeing and how things are affecting. I'd love to hear the reports tonight and I'll obviously pass that on here. But yeah, it's insane. Um, uh, the other thing I wanted to make sure and let you know is earlier we told you that, well, you know, we own Good Talk Radio. This show is syndicated on Good Talk Radio, and we just played a commercial, if you want to go back to it, that shows you how to play Good Talk Radio on your Alexa. And uh, uh, that's the easiest way. And once your Alexa kind of plays it once, it kind of remembers it. So the next time, you only have to say the name of the company, uh, of the station. But uh, once again, if you're also, also interested in the, uh, doing a podcast, or you have a podcast, or you'd like to be a DJ, and you always, you know, a little fantasy of yours, uh, give us a holler, contact us. We may be w willing to work with you. I always love underdogs. Uh, people start out and, and uh, it's always nice to have someone that has something like what we have, 
uh, a radio station, which are quite costly to own, by the way, um, that will work with you. And that's uh, kind of nice. So uh, the other thing I wanted to kind of show you really quick is our CV uh, reports. It looks like we're at uh, 92,000. Wow. And uh, United States is up to 108. Wow. And wow, take a look at Iran and South Korea. We're looking at uh, 5,100 in South Korea and Iran. They say they, the numbers are insane, but the other country to watch is going to be Egypt, I guess. So uh, they're just showing signs of people are leaving the country and getting other people infected. And it's kind of like Iran. Iran was uh, I'm not really saying much about their numbers, yet they're infecting people all over the world. And it sounds like the same thing has been happening in uh, uh, Egypt, too. And it sounds like uh, Mexico is actually starting to have some issues. So I don't know where all this is going. And this whole show is about do we worry? Do we get prepared or not? It's uh, it's hard to say. And uh, I think there's a lot of things you probably should be doing. And uh, most of the things we they're asking us to kind of prep on or things we should prepare on are kind of think common sense items I have around the house anyway, just having a higher quantity. And uh, um, the big part is this quarantine thing. If it could happen to you, you could by law be required to be locked down. And what's that do to your job? What's that do to your family? What does that do to your finances? And, uh, of course, uh, some of the earlier shows are also concerned about the cost, the cost of getting tested. Um, if the states are doing it, does that mean we have to pay for it instead of the CV CBC? There's so many questions. <laughs> and I'm not, I watch a lot of reports and I'm still not, I don't feel like I really know the answers to this stuff by watching all the news I monitor Washington State quite a bit, obviously Arizona, and then some, you know, our leaders are saying, it's okay, but is it? All right, guys, we're getting to the end of our show. Uh, we also see that the stock market's now at 870 minus, <laughs> wow, and it's only noon. We've got two more hours ago. Uh, it could go anywhere, who knows? Uh, maybe the feds will do some miracle again. But if you want to feel better, I highly recommend Nickelback and play Burn It to the Ground <laughs> at full capacity. You'll feel so much better. So with that note, guys, have a wonderful day and do a little bit of head banging. Bye now. Thank you very much for watching our video. Please take the time to like, subscribe, and share our videos all over the whole wide world. Thanks.